If you want to know the five biggest mistakes that I notice many vloggers tend to make and more importantly how you can avoid making them yourself then this video is for you. Hey Mike Blissett here, founder of Speak Like a Pro Online, sharing ideas, tools and techniques to help you make better video. And I think the reality is that we've all been there, I'm including me in this. I'm guessing that you've planned a video, maybe you've researched it, you've uh, written some notes or bullet points, you've recorded it, then you've transferred it to wherever you uh, store the video on, whether it's on your computer or on your phone, and you watch it back and then you notice something. Either there's something out of place or it's too dark or it didn't sound great and something that you know, I know there's a sliding scale where you can maybe still use it, but I think we're talking about that part of the scale where actually it becomes a distraction and you kind of have to make the decision not to use it. So then you've spent all that time and maybe you've had a really good take when you've been shooting the video, but ultimately for that reason, for having made that mistake, then you can't use it. So. In this video, I'm going to be sharing the five biggest mistakes that I notice vloggers make and I'm including myself on that list because I've made all of these mistakes myself and that's why I have this checklist that I'm going to be sharing with you to help you avoid making those same mistakes yourself. So let's jump right into it. Biggest mistake number one, looking at the viewfinder. Now, if you record your videos on your phone and it's in selfie mode, there's a huge temptation to look at yourself on the screen. I understand that. And equally, if you use a camcorder or if you use a DSLR camera and you've got one of those flip out screens, they're really useful because you can center yourself, place yourself in the shot. It's all good stuff. But here's the thing. While you're recording, if you look at your image on whichever screen it is and I'm recording this on my iPhone and it just means that you're kind of looking at the camera but you're not looking into your viewers eyes and it's kind of off-putting it's distracting it means there's no you're kind of breaking that link or maybe you're not making that connection that link that you want to make with your viewer so it's really important to look directly into the camera. Now you don't have to stare them out, it would just be natural. You know, sometimes your eyes do move around, but not looking or for something or reading some show notes or, or, or top tips or something. You kind of, hopefully you've rehearsed your material, but just naturally, uh, you know, sometimes when you're thinking, just kind of doing that, your eyes kind of, um, kind of avert the gaze. But for the 95% of the time that you're in front of uh, your viewer, you're looking at them, you're making eye contact with them. And so one of the ways that I do it, and as I say, I'm, I'm shooting this video on my iPhone, is that I'm actually not shooting it in selfie mode. So it's, it's standing on a tripod over in the corner of this room and I've turned the uh, phone around so it's just the back of the phone looking at me. I can't see myself in the shot. So the way I set that up is that I, I, I did a test uh, video just a few seconds 30 seconds just to make sure I'm not cutting the top of my head off or you know I'm only half there or, or whatever it is you know just to make sure that everything is placed right and then when I hit play for real for this video I'm just looking into the lens and the same would be for whether you're using a camcorder I used a camcorder to make my uh, videos on YouTube and in my newsletter for probably almost 10 years and uh, for probably half of that time, I used to have the screen facing me. Uh, yes, just to make sure I'm uh, placed well, but equally to make sure I was looking good and you know, all the ego stuff when, you, when you're shooting a video. And of course, uh, from a viewer's point of view, when they're watching that video, when they're ultimately watching that video, it's kind of a bit distracting. So as I say, for probably the last five years that I had the camcorder, I used to turn that screen around. Again, just do the quick test shot or maybe do the test shot with the, uh, you know, with the viewfinder uh, looking at me, with the screen looking at me, just to make sure I'm placed. And then before I hit play or record, 
and then I would turn that screen around so I couldn't see myself in that shot and I would just be looking into the lens and the same goes for DSLR. So biggest mistake number two is not to be consistent. Now what I mean by not being consistent is uh, uploading videos now and then. Now I guess your videos don't need to be on exactly the same day each week or each month but actually it kind of helps. But what I mean by mainly by consistency is somebody who maybe uploads uh, one, two or a bunch of videos and then they disappear for six months. And I say, I've done all of these uh, um, kind of mistakes myself that I'm listing today. So I've done that as well. I know how it is when we're busy, when we're trying to build our business, when we're trying to deliver whatever it is in our business, whether it's coaching or training or speaking or whatever it is, I understand. But the thing is, if you want to build a relationship with your viewers who could become your future potential clients, it is about showing up, uh, let's have a meeting, let's have a chat. And what I mean by that is you doing that regularly by producing regular content. So just think about for you, is your regular content every month or every two weeks or every three weeks or every week or every couple of days? I mean, whatever it is for you, but whatever you choose, at least in the beginning, really choose wisely. Don't overwhelm yourself. I know it's a a great temptation, especially when we see so many uh, successful uh, YouTubers, especially YouTubers and Facebookers as well, and they tend to, I don't know how they do it, they upload content every single day. Well, I kind of know how they do it. They kind of batch content, they have a team behind them, they don't have to edit everything. They got a huge support system. But if you are kind of like me at the beginning, and it is you, you are your business, you do everything, and I still do pretty much everything myself, um, then it is about being wise and just being logical with how much content you uh, can upload on a regular and consistent basis. And for me, if you probably see my YouTube channel, and maybe you're watching this on the YouTube channel, I, I say on the, on the top header there that I upload a new video every Monday. So it could be a couple of videos a week if I do a live as well, but I always try to or aim to upload one new video per week. So per week. So that is my uh, schedule. So just think about what that could be for you. And kind of the techie reason behind why that is important is basically uh, the algorithms. So the, uh, the each platform, whichever platform you use, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or whatever, uh, they have systems in place uh, that just get to know what kind of content you upload and how regularly you upload it. And the more regularly you upload it, you build that relationship basically with the algorithm as well as with your uh, viewers, then it pushes you up the list of uh, sites that can be found or videos that can be found when people go in there looking for something. And remember, uh, YouTube, yes, it's a video delivery platform, but actually YouTube is really the second biggest search engine in the world. People go into YouTube, put a search term in how to or top tips or five biggest mistakes to whatever, and then they get a bunch of results. And the higher up you are in uh, kind of the pecking order of uh, that particular niche or question, uh, then uh, the more chances are you will get more views, you'll get more connections, you'll build more relationships. The third biggest mistake is having a weak intro to your videos. Now, hopefully you have already downloaded my free report and video training series, Speak Up, Stand Up, Five Weird Ways to Begin Your Presentation and Make an Impact Quickly. Now, in that uh, free report and video training, I give you five top tips. I'll give you one now about how you can make that initial impression and create an impact pretty quickly. And we really do have to create an impact really quickly. If you, if you want to keep somebody watching your video rather than keep them surfing onto the next video or the next platform or whatever it is, because we're all very busy. We all wanna, we surf around these websites looking at funky videos and when they kind of, uh, kind of land on yours and you start talking, it's preferable that they stay and then they subscribe and they watch some more of your videos 
because then you've begun the relationship. So it's all down to that first three to five seconds. So I said I would share one of the top tips from the free report and video training five weird ways. And by the way, I'm gonna put a link to uh, that uh, free training and report just below this video in the show notes. So if you want to sign up for it, if you haven't yet got it, or if you signed up for it and you've lost it, you can't find the link, just put your details in there and I will gladly send that to you uh, once more. So you're gonna get more than this, just one way I'm gonna share with you how you can create a quick impact. And just think back to the beginning of this video. If you can remember, how did I start it? I'll tell you, I started it with a question. Now, it's a question where I'm looking for the viewer to be intrigued on what the response, on what the, what the answer might be. Not an obvious answer where they think, where you ask the question and, they, and your viewer would think, okay, I know the answer already, I don't need to watch the video. It needs to be an intriguing question that sparks the imagination so they have to keep watching the video, at least to see what you're gonna say after the intro, if that makes sense. Okay, the fourth biggest mistake that I see so many vloggers make in their videos, and I actually, after all these years, uh, had the same, um, the same challenge, <laughs> same challenge, I couldn't use the video. I had this same thing happen to me only last week, and it's this, bad audio. Now, again, with all of these kind of mistakes, there's almost like a sliding scale. It's not a good, not good. It's a kind of what is good enough, what is uh, uh, usable, what is, you know, it's okay, versus oh, it's kind of getting into the dodgy territory. This is just, it's actually better not release territory and that is the negative side of it as well. So audio kind of, it's got this sliding scale as well. So I've mentioned before that generally in filmmaking and TV, it's generally regarded, obviously the, the video uh, quality, the visual quality should be pretty darn good, but actually what's even more essential than the, the, the visuals, of course, is how it sounds. You know, for example, you can watch a grainy old black and white movie where the images maybe jump around a little bit and it's not too comfortable to watch. And act actually, in some modern movies, that's a technique that they use to create intrigue and tension and it's a technique. But here's the thing, if the audio isn't there, if the audio is, is kind of, if it's inaudible or if it's distracting or if it's, it's just not right in some way, chances are you're not gonna watch that movie, you're not gonna watch the TV show, you know, we're gonna watch the video. So audio is all that. It's so, so massively important. So here's the thing. If you can, whichever device you've got, whether it's a, a smartphone or a DSLR or a camcorder, if you can have an external mic, uh, you can get uh, one like this. It's a Rode uh, clip-on mic. Uh, again, there's a link below this uh, in the show notes. And there's some ideas there as well. If you can get uh, an external mic for whichever device you're using, it's gonna be better than the one that's inside of the device. There's some options there, the shotgun mics, there's various kind of lapel mics as well. As I say, I'll put some links in the show notes so you can check those out now. And, uh, you know, mics, external mics, I, one that I've used for years, I'm not using it today, but I've used it for years. I picked up for about, I think it was about 25 pounds, about $30 US. Um, years ago and you know it's still the same price so you don't have to uh, spend too much money on uh, getting really really great sound but what that sound will give you is a more watchable video and just to say if you are going to use an internal mic the only one you should use is possibly in one of the more modern uh, more up-to-date uh, smartphones whether it's an iPhone or an Android or whatever because they tend to have you know, the best quality mics that a, a smartphone can have. That's the reason I say that. If you are using one of those mics, or equally if you're using some other kind of external mic, if you can control the environment as much as you possibly can. So kind of cut down the distracting noises, background noises, or, or whatever it is, as much as you can, um, that's just gonna make your visual side of your video easier to watch. The Fifth biggest mistake I see so many vloggers making is low lighting. As you can see, or maybe you can't see, I've turned my uh, lights off at this point. Uh, so before I move on, let's turn in the back on again. 
Okay, that's easier. <laughs> Just to say, I've got uh, two LED lights here and a lighting ring and uh, they're listed in the show notes underneath. You can follow that link and just check them out and see how, uh, how they work and what they do and how much they cost, etc. So you can check them out. And there are some other solutions down there as well, different kind of lights, lighting boxes and LED lights and uh, all that kind of stuff. So have a look in the show notes after this or equally while you're watching the video and you can see some lighting solutions. And here's the thing. When I had turned my lights off and it was kind of reasonably dark in here the reality is this room ordinarily is kind of just naturally it's a light room and equally it's a sunny day outside but when you are shooting video everything tends to get a bit darker which is why um, in tv studios or on movies uh, they have lights because the camera soaks up the light and if you are the star of your your show your film your video then you should make sure that you are well lit. Not, not over lit, not saturated, not like, like it looks weird, but just so that you can be seen easily. It's just one more thing that makes the viewing experience, this person that's maybe come to your video, maybe they're surfing around the web or YouTube or whatever it is, and they come across your video, it sounds good, it looks good, it's easy, it's, it's easy to watch, and what you're making is intriguing, what you're talking about is intriguing, chances are they're gonna stay on that video, and that's why lighting is super, super important. Okay, so that is it for this time. Hopefully you now know the five biggest mistakes that I notice vloggers tend to make shooting videos, and equally what you can do to avoid making them yourself. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the box immediately below this video. Remember, this channel is all about sharing ideas, tools, and techniques to help you speak better online, make better videos, and share your good stuff. So, question of the day. What is the biggest mistake that you notice vloggers tend to make in their videos? please leave it in the comments box below. I'm sure I can make a bunch more of these videos on the biggest mistakes that we all make as content creators because the reality is we do, that's how we learn, that's how we move forward. And if you want to work on your confidence, your content and your charisma when you are speaking to camera, whether that's on your YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, whatever channel you've got, whether you want to include video in your marketing and in your newsletter to grow your business, or if you want to build an online course yourself, then I just wanna let you know, my brand new online course, Speak Like a Pro Online, is now open. So you will see a link immediately below this video if you wanna check it out. There's loads of good stuff, there's loads of extras, and there's loads of how to. This is me bringing 20 plus years of uh, training, speaking, singing, acting, and all the rest of it to uh, how I produce videos. If you want to know that so that you can do it too in the way that you do it, then this is a fantastic course. So as I say, there's a link just below this video. It's gonna share with you what's included in the course, what extras you get for signing up, and how I can support you through that journey as well. So as soon as you finish watching this video, click that link, speak like a pro online, and I look forward to seeing you in the program. That's it for today. If you are new here, remember, click that subscribe button around the video, the notification bell, so you get to know when I upload new content. And remember, share this video with your mates, buddies, pals, friends, and family, just so that they can get a chance to follow this good stuff too. See you next time.